26 children and their bus driver kidnapped in the biggest mass abduction in U.S. history. They buried the children and the driver alive, 12 feet underground. The Chowchilla kidnapping remains one of the most unique and shocking kidnap cases to ever occur. In the afternoon of July 15, 1976, 26 children of the Dairyland Elementary School were on their way home after a swimming trip in Chowchilla. Just another average summer day, very hot, going to summer school. The bus driver was Ed Ray. He was a strong, quiet man. Everybody liked Edward. Suddenly the bus was blocked by a white van in the road and Ed was confronted by a masked man. And then this man came up with a stocking over his head with a gun and said, open the door. Three men armed with pistols and shotguns took over the bus and began to drop. Not far from Chowchilla, the gunmen hit the bus in a dry river bed, transferred their prisoners into two vans. The vans had been converted into makeshift jail cells by installing wood paneling and even painting the windows. No one could see in or out. For 11 hours, they drove in the sweltering heat. No bathroom breaks, no water. Not knowing where they were going, both the children and their driver were terrified. We drove what seemed like for hours upon hours upon hours. Eventually, the bus stopped, and in the early hours of the morning, Ed and the children were forced down a ladder into an underground prison. Before I knew it, the ladder was gone. They threw a rolled toilet paper down and said, we'll be back for you. They had been placed in a buried moving truck 12 feet underground. They were given a small amount of food and water, as well as a makeshift toilet before being abandoned. It was just pitch black, like the dark was touching me. Meanwhile, back at home in Chowchilla, the victims' families were distraught. 26 school children and their bus driver have vanished. Anguished parents, President Ford, hundreds of searching police are asking the question, where are the children? At the present time, we know that there's 27 people missing since about uh, uh, 4.15 yesterday afternoon. A huge manhunt began as the FBI arrived in town in huge numbers to begin a thorough investigation. Eventually, the children's school bus was spotted by a pilot overhead. Just before sunset, a police pilot spotted the big bus about seven miles outside Chowchilla, hidden in the dry riverbed. Police expected to receive a ransom demand from the kidnappers, but none came. So far, there's been no word from any abductors. They desperately searched for clues on the school bus, not knowing that the children were buried 100 miles away in a rock quarry. After being in the hole for 12 hours, the small amount of food rations left by the captors were gone. The fans keeping the van ventilated had stopped working and the roof was beginning to cave in. We were out of food, we were out of water. The roof was caving in. It just was a desperate situation. Willing to die underground, Ed and the children began to plan an escape. The kidnappers had blocked the entrance hole with a manhole cover, placing dirt, truck batteries on top of it to prevent it from being moved. They also constructed a wooden box around it. Everybody got the mattresses and stacked them up as high as we could go. People started standing on each other's shoulders. Children began to work together to remove the manhole cover. Finally, 14-year-old Michael Marshall managed to remove the cover. Once the manhole cover was moved, that box was just big enough for Michael to stand in. Mike Marshall actually, brave person that he is, crawled out of the hole first. And I stuck my head out, and there was nobody. I didn't see anybody. We saw conveyor belts, excavators. It looked like the Flintstones. And all these men with hard hats came to us and looked at us like, who are you? Children were found by quarry workers in Livermore, California, after digging themselves out of the underground prison. 14-year-old Michael Marshall and the bus driver piled up mattresses that were in the hole. And after 16 hours in darkness, they managed to dig their way to safety. It is confirmed by the Alameda County Sheriff that the children have been found in a quarry. Children were checked over and questioned thoroughly before being returned home. They took us into what looked like classrooms. They brought us apples and soda. However, after the children's rescue, their captors were nowhere to be seen. Did they arrest the people who apparently are no, responsible? No, they are still looking for the captors of the children. Didn't take long, however, for the police to track down their first suspect. Police searched the quarry and the van hoping to find clues. They soon decided that whoever carried out the abduction 
would have needed access to the quarry. Fred Woods had keys to that quarry. The quarry owner's son, Fred Woods, and two of his close friends, James and Richard Schoenfeld, were soon arrested. The arrests were met with great surprise and interest as they were the last people that many would have suspected. They're young, they're wealthy. I think it added a component of fascination to the story because it was so unlikely that three men such as these would commit such a atrocious crime. Police searched Woods' father's estate, covering mountains of evidence, including extensive plans to carry out the kidnap. They were going to ask for $5 million from the state of California. It had been planned for months, but something had gone horribly wrong on the day. Because of the number of calls that were coming in worldwide, the phone lines were jammed. They couldn't get through, so they took a nap. And by the time they woke up, they saw on the news that the kids had been found. The three men were soon arrested and charged. The kidnappers, all from wealthy families, were sentenced to life in prison. Three men were aged between 22 and 24 while they carried out the offense. They spent between 36 and 46 years behind bars for their crimes before being released between 2012 and 2022. During the trial, they explained their actions. We needed multiple victims to get multiple millions and so we pick children because they're precious. The long sentences were given due to the psychological damage inflicted upon their victims who are still scarred from the event nearly 50 years later. 26 terrified children, some as young as five, were staring down the barrel of a sawed-off shotgun. Did they offer therapy to these kids? You know, Gail, they took them to Disneyland because the thought was if we go to Disneyland and take a picture and you see Mickey Mouse and everything's great. The 1976 Chowchilla kidnapping remains one of the most shocking kidnapping cases in U.S. history to this day. If it wasn't for the bravery and determination of Ed and the kids, it's possible that many of the children would have never made it home. Thanks for watching this episode of Crime 101. Don't forget to subscribe for more.